My number one reason, uh, he might have a kid or wife or girlfriend oh here. He came here four years ago. His kid's now three years old. Uh, so Tammy, he's... can we have a TMZ background here? Welcome to YouTube's favorite K-pop show, D. King News, Danny Kim, David, lots and lots of... Hot tea. First off, we have April and DSP going to court oh against former April member Hyunju. Oh boy. And second, we have Coldplay x BTS collab coming soon. Oh, we don't know, but Coldplay is here in Korea to do something. Mm. And last but not least, we have EXO possibly healing the China and South Korea tensions. And before we go on into the news, we just want to let you guys know that we have a DK News after show all the time after each episode. And we talk about each respective topic in deeper layers and we debate with each other. We talk with you live for only $5, a cup of coffee. You will get four after shows at least per month plus a monthly council. So a lot of perks there. Please join the after show. It's a lot of fun. Currently, we have 1,200 active Patreons and hundreds of Patreons joining the after show. It's a lot of fun. So I hope to see you there and on to the first news. So China and South Korea tensions are finally coming to an end. That, that might be fake news. There has been news like this <laughs> for the past, I don't know, five years at least. But I don't know, maybe it's different this time. Mm. Some people are predicting the end mm. of a tunnel. Okay, officials are predicting a melting of the cultural Hallyu ban from mm. China. From China as signs of peace have been found recently in Chinese newspapers. Mm. Very Interesting. underwhelming. Interesting. <laughs> but... Now this is the Chinese newspaper from the 12th and as you can see there is a full page ad of the K-pop idol group EXO along with Kyungi Palace as the background. Oh, okay. Wow. That's actually new. So That's significant, not... right? It is significant. Oh really? I thought you would be no, like, no, oh no. yeah, well, so what? Well, newspapers in China are state run. Oh right? yes. So actually I was about to get to that point. Mm. It's an advertisement promoting Chinese people to visit Korea and the titles encourage people to experience Korea and the past and current of Korea. Uh, now you might think, what's all the fuss about a newspaper ad? But, however, this newspaper isn't any newspaper. It's called the Global Times oh, in Korean or Chinese, Hangu Shibo, Hangu Shibo yeah. which is a government-run and managed newspaper. Right. And the Global Times has a stance of being very ultra-nationalistic. Yeah, it's basically the government saying stuff. Yeah. Well, oh, this is the first time ever a Korean tourism ad has been published, or should we say approved, mm -hmm. on the Global Times. And to give you a little context, China has banned any kind of Korean wave-related imports or activity being promoted officially since the THAAD conflicts. Yeah. The THAAD is like the Patriot defense system in order to protect South Korea from missiles, possibly flying and coming from North Korea. However, the Chinese government regarded it as an act of hostility since the system enabled like radars and satellite detection and involved the US military into Korean soil which is very close to China right so there are like geopolitical reasons missed there it's complicated yeah anyways going back since then no k-pop idols were allowed to perform in China and more than 40 collaborated movies and dramas between the countries have indefinitely been on a hold from premiering however it was revealed the other day that after the EXO advertisement there are five more Korean tours ads to come oh, wow. on the newspaper so wow. this is quite of a big deal uh, and this time it will be ads not only about Seoul it'll be about Busan, Gangneung and so on so they're basically promoting all the areas of Korea well I wonder why right now though because they can't really come right now mm -hmm. huh. so we'll get to that later but an official from the Korea tourism organization Beijing office stated that using an advertisement with a k-pop star and making attempts such as publishing exclusive stories on Korean tourism could lead to advertising Korea better and making a progressive relationship and interaction between the two countries. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Koreans are still skeptical about putting any meaning towards this advertisement considering the fact that the Global Times was the very paper that published articles such as the origin of kimchi right. being China, uh, twisting BTS's Van Fleet award win, uh -huh. so they have a record. Uh, on the contrary, experts point out that the Global Times usually imply the Chinese government's intentions. Uh, thus, this advertisement could mean something. A uh, Professor Moon stated that this advertisement seems to be a signal towards the Korean government that China will soon 
open its gates towards Korean tourism. The Chinese gods have answered. <laughs> Korea, you may enter. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's also the best timing because next year is the 30th anniversary of China-Korea oh, relationships. Wow. On the other hand, currently, ironically, the biggest Blue House petition in Korea, smashing through a 600,000 petitions in a few days, is about retracting the construction of a Chinatown in Gangwon Province. Mm -hmm. The Gangwon Province governor recently came out saying that he has a master plan for building yeah. a Chinatown. He loves that China. Yeah, money. cultural town and that all the Gangwon Province residents love that idea, stuff right, like that. Right. There's going to be a lot of tourism, capital flowing yeah. in, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Anyways, the gist of the petition that wants the Chinatown to retract is that first, this is Korea and we don't need a Chinatown and cultural village for people to experience Chinese culture. And second, that particular area has one of the most historic ruins and remains in Korea. And third, Koreans are sick and tired of China constantly trying to twist history to their favor and stealing our cultural heritage such as kimchi hanbo, kat, and more. And this petition is gaining more attention by the day and it will be definitely interesting to see how this movement might affect the future relationship with, right. with China. What's your take on this whole situation? Let's go first okay. with the ad in the newspaper. Well, I do think it's a move from China. I mean, it's probably very intentional considering how much they've bashed Korea uh, for so long. I guess them saying, okay, we're open now. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's a good thing. Though I don't know if China can be trusted. Yeah, it's a, it's a positive move, at least for if you're talking about the entertainment industry. Um, for them to have the Chinese market is going to be huge. Good thing. I am not very right-sided on that advertisement. I'm not very optimistic because actually there were some past examples such as uh, China, you know, saying it's like National Shopping Day. And then they promoted a lot of like Korean beauty brands and cosmetics. All of that was just to promote consumption. While the Chinese Hallyu ban was eminent, even then Chinese tourists came to Korea, like still. Was it, there was a big decrease. I guess there was like a restriction but decrease. still they were able to come to Korea. I think now like China is like, oh, our economy is good. COVID is now gone according to them. Like, yeah, according to them, no one died of COVID. Yeah, so let's send our <laughs> citizens places and, you know, uh, amplify tourism and I stuff mean, like that. Korea so. Tourism Organization was the one that put up the ad. But they wouldn't even have now. a choice if they don't. I know, but like... Approves. I mean, of the course, the, the day, Korean Tourism the... Organization, they would be knocking on China's door for five, seven years already. Okay, who gives a shit? At the end of the day, the money's flowing in. And like, no. if, if you if you think about it, people, Korean people, a lot of them, like look at Myeongdong, yeah, yeah. the empty stores, those people all depended their lives on Chinese people to come in. So like for them, for these people like these, you know, it's it's good news. You can't just think about like, oh, we hate China, so we're going to ban them and shit like that. Because there's a lot of people in Korea that their lives depend on Chinese people coming in, Chinese businesses. Yeah, yeah. And we can't just tell them, hey, you know, like go find some other freaking job. But the whole other 90% of the country is afraid that this Chinese money for these specific population of merchants or stores is eventually gonna uh, devour up our national wealth and we'll end up like Sydney or, you know, New York. Or... Yeah, that's that's the future. Yeah, so China I is mean, gonna that's, that's take awesome. over. I just saw an article that the fertility rate in Korea, the birth rate in Korea is the lowest in the whole world. We're getting more Chinese immigrants. People are worried. Seeking this little money from uh -huh. Chinese capital is eventually just gonna end our whole country. It's the start of a new era. China-Korea era. I don't think we should be that <laughs> naive. We should be cautious. In in terms of K-pop, I like Chinese food. Uh... I like yeah, that's, that's dumb. <laughs> in terms of K-pop, as I said before, my stance is the same. While Chinese money did make a lot of groups, you know, thrive and survive. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, I did think the Chinese ban actually did a positive thing in the K-pop industry because we frontiered to new markets and new markets were developed. And now K-pop is a much more global thing, second gen era, when K-pop was totally dependent on China and Japan money. But, but now but we have the whole world backing us up. So. That's very, I feel like, only looking at the bright side of the story because if you look at the K-pop industry, yes, there are groups that can afford to go like outside of mm. Asia, you know? I mean, it costs a lot, first of all, to tour outside of yeah. Asia. So there's a few groups that can do that. The rest of K-pop, they can't. And actually, there's a lot of celebrities that are only popular in China. So just to say like, oh, because, you know, these handful of very popular groups made it. No, I'm not saying they made Korea, it. I'm saying, I'm saying that I, they, 
all of them have now a wider market than before. Now our eyes are on the whole globe. That's, so. that's true. But at the same time, if it's whether it's profitable, uh, I don't think it's not pro- I don't yeah, think it's profitable. But I'm always going to be firm with this stance that we should lower the dependency on Chinese mm. fans and money. I don't know. I like China. I don't know. I, I like personally, this is my personal observation. There's purely some kind of generalization behind this disclaimer, but most of the cases I've seen of toxic fans and sasengs, they're usually Chinese fans. Well, there's 2 billion people. But still, <laughs> there's a typical culture in the Chinese fandom. I'm sorry if you're not one of them. And I feel like the fandom culture has become more diverse, more open and conversational since, since the Chinese ban has been active and the global fandom has... Nah. I, I, I totally think same. I totally think that <laughs> actually actually can I add on one more thing yeah. uh, last weekend I met a friend he actually lived in China for 20 years mm. and he was like going to local schools and stuff mm-hmm. so he's essentially like half Chinese yeah and I asked him about like the whole kimchi thing and all this, all the history bending stuff that Korea has been accusing China mm. of which is actually you know true uh, but he, he told me that like Chinese people, the Chinese like regular citizens don't give a shit about like that kind of stuff and a lot of what Korean media and also what Chinese media picks out is like they pick out the most extreme um, posts and comments to enrage the public mm. with. That's pretty obvious like yeah. that the normal people don't yeah. care about those kind yeah. of stuff but the dangerous aspect about that is that even a very small vocal minority in China speaking those kind of agendas and the government supporting it and backing it up okay. eventually leads to like I don't want to call them sheep but Chinese people have no other choice but to follow the government's agendas and, and uh, opinions so mm. like if that becomes like the real agenda real circulating thing like just as yeah. they're trying to twist history yeah. then the Chinese people will just support that another side story is that a lot of Korean people in the comments are actually right now very furious because cryptocurrency the hype is crazy in korea and because of that there's like a 20 percent price premium in the korean market and currently a lot of chinese people are buying cryptocurrency in their country Uh and coming over to korea and selling it with 20 percent premium Uh with like billions and billions of dollars Uh and then they're buying all the real estate up in myeongdong and jeju and all these juicy areas in Korea. Uh-huh. I've actually seen that myself when I went to Myeongdong right, like yeah. a few weeks ago. It's a ghost town because of COVID. All the stores are, they're, they're just all closed. Uh-huh. And I see like Chinese people with money bags, like Gucci bags, taking pictures and yeah. shop they're shopping, shopping the store shopping. Yeah. Shopping the empty store. Korean people are super pissed about the situation right now because like our national wealth is getting stolen. That's capitalism, guys. And, and yeah, and that's what they're exactly afraid of what will happen in the country. Gangwon province because they will come in. On to the next news. Is a Coldplay X BTS collaboration coming soon? Chris Martin, the lead vocalist of Coldplay, made a surprise visit to Korea on April 16th. The news broke out through an Instagram post where an enlisted soldier working at the quarantine support force in Incheon International Airport posted a picture of Chris Martin's autograph with the captions, Just met Chris Martin during my service in the quarantine support force. Thank you for making my day my best memory during service. Welcome to Korea. He also shared that he had a 20 minute conversation with Chris Martin, which is amazing. I was about to comment like, oh, he must have had like a super shitty, you know, service period if that was his like best. No, I mean, honestly, like, but if he had like a 20 minute conversation with Chris Martin, then that is actually It's something that you can brag about your entire life. Also, other netizens that uh, claim that they had seen Chris Martin at the airport that day. However, it's unclear if the rest of the Coldplay members came as well or just him. Currently, uh, only reports about Chris Martin are here. Mm-hmm. Uh, naturally, his sudden visit to Korea sparked a lot of speculation for the reasons of him coming. As this news was completely out of the blue, and it had no announcements on why he came, so people were very confused mm-hmm. and were guessing. April 16th happened to be the exact date um, that Coldplay had performed uh, for the first and last time in Korea four years ago. Uh, They actually performed two dates, 15th and 16th. 
So some speculated another concert, though that seems extremely unlikely due to the outbreak of the pandemic uh, in Korea, like the fourth Probably outbreak. Not. Obviously, we can't do concert training. Mm. By law, Chris Martin will have to go through two weeks of quarantine. So many are speculating that it must be a very important schedule for right. him. Right. Uh, two possibly, weeks for Coldplay. I know. Possibly collaboration with a very big K-pop artist. Naturally, uh, BTS's name is currently being brought up. Of course. BTS had done a cover of Coldplay's Fix You on MTV Unplugged uh, last February, mm -hmm. to which Coldplay gave a nod on their official Twitter account. So they do, they're acknowledging each other right. and they're, you know, respecting each other. Mm -hmm. um, others are suggesting a TV appearance no. or just a vacation, maybe Mass Singer. Yeah, maybe he just came from <laughs> come BBQ, chicken you, and beer. He'll come on Mass Singer. Yeah. And then... Uh, maybe he just wants to tour, you know, Korean yeah, yeah, Seoul. Yeah, yeah. He wants to Get see some the inspiration. Kongi, uh, palace or some <laughs> shit. Uh, regardless, it must be something really worth it. Seriously worth it for him to spend two weeks locked up um, and still come here. Because, like, you know, I've... I've seen a lot of people that spend two weeks in quarantine. It drives them crazy. It's Chris Martin probably makes like a hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. per day. Like so. each second is like yeah. I don't know a dollar for him. Maybe he would like he should do TikTok or something <laughs> in, in the meanwhile, so that he can he can make up for his losses. I'm pretty sure it would be more uh, productive for him to write a song than uh, do yeah, that's true. <laughs> so what do you think he came to Korea for? Um, so I've actually I'm seen a lot of confused. articles and Dispatch yeah. actually kind of confirmed that he's here for a collaboration with a K-pop artist. Yeah. They said, uh, we have our sources that are allegedly leading to like a K-pop collaboration. Right. So I guess Dispatch being Dispatch, you know, I hate to say this, but they are pretty credible at this point. Yeah. There's nothing that can match the importance of that two weeks quarantine. It has to be BTS level or Blackpink level. Some are saying Yoonha because apparently they took a picture together and uh, they... Uh, <laughs> I love you, huh? But, but um, yeah, not to degrade all the artists, but unless he makes like, like ten TikToks, we're talking a day. business here, okay? I would meet Hybe. I think he has a wife. But actually, he's divorced now. Maybe he has a Korean wife. Yeah, maybe that might be the uh, reason. Maybe but he's getting married. My bets are I'm long, like ninety percent on BTS Coldplay collab. I can't think of anything else. I don't think this is a collaboration. Oh, then what? Um, well, first of all, I checked with my big hit source. Okay. They're not being very clear. Then um, that means it's clear. <laughs> I know, I know. You're a BTS collaboration. I do think that like, that is definitely on the books, mm. but that's not the main reason he came here mm. for, is my guess. Like, if he were to collaborate, he could have done it like in like his the other own artists, home, you know? you know? Like he doesn't have to come here mm. um, and spend two weeks to collaborate. Unless they're like making an entire album together, which at that point, then I would guess that that's the reason. My number one reason, uh, he might have a kid or wife or girlfriend oh here. He came here four years ago. His kid's now three years old. Uh, so Tammy, can we have a TMZ background here? Second, he has a very big business move to make here with Hype, Maybe, uh, yeah, which I, I don't know why he has to still come to Korea for that because like Hype could send people over to his house. And number three, uh, while he's here, I think definitely he's gonna do a collab with BTS. Mm -hmm. Like that's a given. Mm -hmm. Number four, he'll appear in Mass Singer. And number five, he's gonna buy real estate here. <laughs> He's gonna Are you come, kidding he's me? He's gonna come on Mass Singer. Are you kidding me? He's gonna come you on think Mass Chris Martin's gonna be on Mass Singer bank. and people aren't gonna know his freaking voice? It's like, who is he? Who is he? Oh my god. Is he Korean? Are he's gonna buy real estate here. He got inspired <laughs> by the Chinese people. He saw them and he's like, I gotta get into some of oh that cash. Oh my god. Korea real estate market, very hot right now. <laughs> Shit. Number six. What now? He's gonna sell crypto here. <laughs> Point. Maybe he's here for the world peace with North Korea, like Bono or something. Anything. Tammy, keep that TMZ flag flowing here with the breaking news. I'm gonna put my all-in bet into a physical appearance, yeah, physical a collaboration a with BTS. That's gonna happen. Chris that's gonna happen. You didn't say physical though, so. Well, well he's here, so he's gonna be physical. No, but it might just weird. be like a you know a music collab in a producer room. But yeah. I'm gonna bet there's gonna be a music video or at least. Oh. Chris Martin is producing BTS's next album. No, 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 I don't no, no, think no, the whole no. album, but no. one song at least. No, he's gonna be the lead producer where he oversees the entire album production of uh, BTS's uh, new album. I don't know. Hot Anyways, right there. Um, seven of Danny's reasons versus physical okay. music video appearance Some, with something's BTS. Something's gotta stick on the wall. It's gonna be something physical. So let's go physical. physical. <laughs> next news. Oh, next news. speaking of physical, oh my goodness. What does this have to do with physical? I don't know.
So, <laughs> former April member Lee Hyunju to fight with April and DSP in court. Oh a month ago, claims that former April member Hyunju was being bullied by other members surfaced. April's label DSP decided to ongo with legal measures, suing Hyunju's younger brother and friends that had brought up the allegations regarding her bullying issue. Hyunju also supported her family and friends' claims by saying that she had been constantly suffering from bullying since pre-debut until the moment of her exit. Uh, her parents notified the label. Uh, that she was being bullied, but allegedly the bullying got even worse. Uh, Hyunju stated that the information that was revealed to the public was very limited and that there were numerous cases of violence, abuse, harassment, right. insults within the three years of her idol activities. Uh, struggling in endless darkness, she even tried to make the ultimate decision, uh, but the members never even showed a sign of being sorry or anything at all, allegedly, according to Hyunju. Uh, Hyunju said that she was kicked out from the team due to a one-sided reason and after that she had to endure hate comments criticizing her as a traitor according to Hyunju DSP is refusing to cancel her contract even to this day and is canceling every kind of new job opportunity without her consent Hyunju finally came out on the 18th like yesterday saying that her patience is now over and that she will take action in order to protect herself her family and friends therefore she has officially stated that she will fight DSP in April in court. Mm. DSP immediately rebutted Hyunju's statement. DSP stated that posting is a one-sided, fabricated claim that is far from the objective truth. DSP went on criticizing Hyunju's irresponsible behavior, pointing out that only after five years from leaving the group, now Hyunju is suddenly coming out with her family, showing irresponsible behavior, which has caused mental and financial damage to the members. Uh, she has shared pain with for a long time. In the meantime, April members also came out rebutting all the alleged claims from Hyunju. And this is not a very common scene you see in right. K-pop. Like the members actually stepping They're up and voicing... Airing out the dirty laundry. Yeah, and also like fighting back. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty hot tea here. Um, April's Cheon said, We have never bullied any member. As a matter of fact, we actually tried to take special care of Hyunju, which was physically and mentally weak. We were always close with Hyunju since pre-debut days, and it doesn't make sense that the manager can neglect these kind of things. And if Hyunju has a conscience, wow, then she will remember all the truth and the truth will be revealed. Wow. Every accusation is false. Wow, Cheon going super hard. And she also mentioned that there was evidence prepared about the matter. Oh, so boy. they're prepared. Oh, um, April member Yena also came out saying, we wanted everything to be revealed at court, but we just can't ignore all the false accusations being made at the moment. Mm -hmm. And Yena went on saying, we did things we would definitely do for her as a member, such as always keeping manners even in tough situations, yielding our turns, writing letters for each other when she was sick and more. But we always felt that she was pushing us away. Uh, we just want to let everyone know that there was no such bullying and we will try to keep strong until the truth comes out. Okay. So apparently the Korean public has sided with Hyunju yeah. as the comments are mostly in favor of her side. Responses show such as uh, Hyunju fighting. Uh, just look at the video circulating. It's clear how much Hyunju has suffered. The members are really nasty and rather than apologizing, DSP is busy protecting them. DSP is at fault too as a bystander. And uh, another one said, when you see these kind of issues, it's really funny. Rather than trying to rule who is right or wrong, if someone claims that they are emotionally hurt, then isn't it common sense to try to understand the pain and respect that first and talk about it? How do you plan on ruling a matter of emotions and heart with the law? Uh, well, that's, those are two different things, guys. I guess, but like, I, I, law, I get man. the point there. We have constantly seen victims saying that all I want is a sincere apology and them to come to talk with me about the issue. It happened with AOA and stuff. Well, it was... the tricky part is here, we don't know who the victim is. Yeah, I know. But at least I, I do think the comment has a point because rather than threatening each other to go to court, I think it would be very productive to at least sit on the same table and look in each other's eyes and, you know, talk about what happened and why, where she's coming from. But with K-pop labels, I understand it's, it's, a, it's a, a matter of business I, and money and finances. I mean, Overall, this thing is escalating really fast. Things are getting really nasty and dirty. I have never seen such a big fight in K-pop before between like the uh, former members. Yeah. And, uh, except AOA maybe. But yeah. AOA kind of went down with that. I don't know what's going to happen with April. Uh, Naeun has been in controversy because of her miss 
behavior on like some TV shows and stuff.、Uh-huh. So, like, everything's pretty downhill for April. The public consensus、yeah. opinion is, you know,、yeah. negative towards April.、Uh, things are not looking good. Yeah, it's unfortunate.、Um, I, I don't know like, how long this legal process will take, but、mm-hmm. usually lawsuits take many, many years. Yep. If They're going through this lawsuit. By the time they finish the lawsuit and they maybe, if April is innocent、yeah. and they clear their name,、mm-hmm. uh, that'll be like three, four years down、That's、the line. That's a big、possibly. loss of their career, right? right. Yeah. And、um, there's a lot of cases like that. And、uh, they were was, just climbing with popularity. Right, 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 right. During those years, it'll be very difficult for them to do anything. I don't think a lot of TV stations or whoever would want to. Risk that. They're in a very big disadvantage because right now、mm-hmm. the climate is all the school bullying accusations,、right. Hoyaji, Pak Sung, all these celebrity scandals and controversies going on. The public is riled up with these k i n d of things. This is like the worst timing. If this was just like a peaceful day in K pop, while like all the Korean public doesn't give a shit about K pop, you know, usually. I, I, I think this is the best time to actually sweep it under the rug because right now I think people have. Lost interest in the school bullying stuff?、Mm, I don't think so. People, I think it's going on. It's people a, are like, oh, yeah, we've heard too many school bullying stories. Now let's move on to the next news.、Uh, maybe. Maybe you can、the、think、Stiff、of it. Stiff Kim in that has、point. taken Korea by the storm. Actually,、right? Stiff Kim. Gone on, too? Yeah, gone. And Soya j i n is like getting canceled、oh, a right, lot. Like,、right. she's all her advertisement deals yeah, are getting、yeah. gone. Like, she has to pay the millions of dollars. Millions of dollars for.、Yeah. Breaching of contract、yeah. and off track. I was actually looking at like a government funding program for us for、yeah. DKDK TV today. And you know what? The first clause is if you cause public disturbance,、mm. your funding and your qualification of the program will immediately be deleted.、Mm. Don't get canceled. So, this is how bad it is in Korea right now.、Uh. The whole advertising industry, the whole media industry is. Very, very nervous and strict.、Right. They're not taking any chances. So, well, good luck, April and Hyunju, whoever is g o n n a win. Looks as if like Hyunju has a lot of advantage. She has the public. If you look at the record recently, the victims had a lot of power exposing idol groups, and a lot of idol、right. groups went down with that. Following that series of events,、right. if it were to repeat again, then I think Hyunju might、mm. have a very big possibility. I, I'm g o n n a stay on the fence here、mm. because I I've been in a situation、uh, on either end where I felt like I was being bullied, and then I've been on situations where I didn't think I was right, bullied, right. but someone、uh, called their mom,、mm. and their mom actually threatened to expel me. She said that I was bullying him,、mm. and then I didn't think it was bullying. It really depends on the person, and for like April, they might be speaking their truth,、mm. for Hyunju, she might be speaking her、yeah. truth. I don't know, like. But even in that、situation. case, even if you're the bully that doesn't know that you're bullying, it's mostly the bully that's like trying to justify themselves. I wasn't bullying. I'm was gonna just、bullying? cancel myself now. <laughs> But one thing though, one thing though, <laughs> April said they have evidence. And I feel like that might take a big part in yeah, the yeah, fighting. Yeah, yeah, let's hear that evidence. As,、uh, I don't know how much Hunju has on her side,、uh-huh. but if it's all like claims and allegations right, and stuff,、right. we don't know. But, anyways, this is gonna get long and yeah, nasty. Yeah. We'll, so we'll talk more on the after show. We'll talk about these updates and like maybe look into some past cases similar to this. Mark, in my the case?、Show. I don't want you to share your case. Like, please. It is not、don't、necessary、worry. to. He's living a good life now. Why do you feel like someone's out of jail or something? Like, with that. He's happy. I sure hope he doesn't see this video. Did you shave your head because you're like、I'm、repenting? Yes,、you? I'm repenting, guy.、Uh, you know who I'm talking about. I was so sorry. I was like freshman high school. Don't, don't, don't. He's just joking, okay, guys? <laughs> Before anybody comes out. Yeah,、man. so please join the after show to get the hot tea.、Uh, we'll talk about other issues as well going、Bye、on in、you. Korea. No! <laughs> And、uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.